Good morning. Uh, so this is my day two uh, in Santiago, the Compostela. I'm standing right in front of the Great Cathedral of Santiago. Uh, I'm going to tell you uh, in, in following uh, four, five, six videos about uh, the history of, uh, of the cathedral, the whole story behind it, and also you can see I'm standing right in the middle of these six lanes coming from six different directions and all meeting up here in the middle. I'll be telling a bit more about these these lines as well. Also, I've got two buildings on my left, one on my right, and one right opposite the cathedral. And I will be telling you a bit more about all these four buildings. So the story starts something like this: Santiago, he was one of the twelve uh, closest friends to uh, Jesus, and uh, uh, Jesus asked Santiago to go to the end of the world. To spread Christianity and obviously in this Roman times the Istra which is about 100 kilometers from here a beautiful post that considered to be the end of the world so Santiago apparently volunteered to come and travel to this part of the world and start spreading Christianity uh, but then one night he was sleeping and he saw a dream where uh, Mary uh, asked him to come back to to Jerusalem and uh, so next morning he started his journey with his two disciples to Jerusalem. So Santiago went uh, to Jerusalem and on his way back uh, from Jerusalem he was captured by the Roman soldiers. Uh, and at those times the Romans were obviously not Christians, they were vegans. They didn't believe in God whatsoever, they used to worship a fire. Uh, and, uh, Obviously, uh, Santiago tried to convince them and tried to preach uh, Christianity to them and in return, uh, they murdered him and they, they just cut his head off uh, and threw him into, into the woods. But his two disciples, they were freed and they managed to put his body onto the boat and apparently that boat was guided by the angels uh, to the place I was a couple of nights ago, Padrón, and I told you guys a little bit story about that. And when those disciples, the boat arrived at the coast of Padron through the Sar River. That time, they, they went to see the queen of that time and asked her if they could bury St. James there. But the queen, unfortunately, was also vegan. So once uh, the disciples uh, arrived in uh, uh, Padron, they went to see the, the, at the time the queen of Padron and asked her permission if they could bury. Uh, St. James in, in Padro. But unfortunately, at that time, the Queen, she was big, vegan as well. She didn't believe in God and she didn't believe in Christianity. However, she was kind enough to offer them uh, this place, which was only used to be just a hill and uh, with no population around it whatsoever. And she said, You are allowed to bury Santiago into those, uh, um, to those mountain or hill, whatever it was at that time. So they brought this body here and this behind me and buried him in the woods. So they buried uh, Santiago here on this hill and they also started to uh, live here as well and then once eventually they died, they got buried right next to one on the left or one on the right of uh, St. James. Uh, time passed, 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 eight centuries later, in the eighth century, a farmer around here saw a star shining onto this mountain. So he followed that light and then that light apparently led him to the grave of, of St. James. And the next morning the farmer went to see the king at that time, King Alphonse II, and told him the story and then king sent some of his people to go and have a look at it and once they found the tomb, the, the, the graves, they decided to build a small a church over it. So yeah, eighth century later when uh, they discovered the, the graves of uh, uh, Santiago and his disciples, then the King Alphonse II, I mean obviously uh, eight centuries later the Christianity had already uh, spread. Uh, people had strong beliefs in Christianity. The Alphonse II, the second, he is the one actually who took the first pilgrimage to this place to visit it and commission small church built over uh, the, the graves and then obviously with the time 
growing their first third and the fourth, they started to expand it and today what we have is a massive, massive cathedral built over this, uh, this place. So it's a fantastic uh, place to be and apparently this uh, cathedral or Santiago is the third uh, most sacred place in Christianity after Jerusalem and the Vatican City. So it is, it's, a, it's a fantastic place, a fantastic city. As you can see behind me, and these sort of lines, one, two, three here, and one, two, three there, uh, they're sort of a paved road, you can see them, but all six lines are meeting in the center. So apparently these lines represent the six ways to come uh, for this uh, pilgrimage. People coming from France, line, that's the French line, the English line, there's a Portuguese line. So people coming from all six sides, six different routes, meeting in this one very center of the place. And these lines are the representation of those six routes, that six different routes you can take to finish this community. Uh, I'll tell you a bit more about these buildings on my left hand right now. The building uh, on the right of the cathedral, which is on my left now, uh, was initially built as a hospital for the pil pilgrimages. And you can imagine, uh, you know, eight centuries ago, uh, ten centuries ago, when the people were coming from far, far away. I mean, initially it is 800 kilometers walk uh, with no medical supplies, with no medical help on the way as well. Some of them would die on the way, some of them would be very ill by the time they come, some of them have serious injuries here. And this was the hospital which was built to treat all those pilgrimages uh, who would come for this. And they would also be offered shelter and food as well. So this hospital building has turned into a, a hotel now, very expensive one. This building behind me, which is the left wing of the cathedral, is a, a university, which is now almost 600 years old university, and it is the second oldest university of Spain as well. Uh, it was built, obviously, as you can imagine, in the 12th, uh, 12th century. Uh, fantastic, but now uh, it's not a university anymore. It has turned into a building which is like an office of education of some sort. Uh, but it's quite fascinating to see the second oldest university uh, of Spain. Very fascinating. A fantastic place to be, guys. So this fourth uh, most uh, important building, which is in the same square, right opposite the cathedral, uh, where the, we have got this uh, hotel at the right, and we've got the university on the left, which is just opposite. If I could show you a bit closer, uh, the statue right on the top is apparently St. James on a white horse. There's a story behind it. I'll try to tell you a bit about it. And if you could see the sculpture in the triangle, it's, it represents the war between Muslims and Christians which happened here and obviously uh, apparently the legend is that uh, uh, St. James appeared on a white horse with a, with a sword in his hand which was lit up in fire and helped the, these people to win the war against the Muslims. So it's quite an interesting story. of the cathedral. Uh, I've already told you uh, everything about the cathedral in my first videos, which I'm sure you have seen. And right in front of the cathedral's main entrance, I've got this horse fountain with four uh, horses. Uh, I will tell you a bit of a story about it as well. And there is a new building right in front of the cathedral main entrance. And it has also got a story about it, which I'm going to tell you in the following video. It's a very interesting story about this fountain uh, which was built right in front of the cathedral main entrance. Every new disciple or the students coming to to study here, uh, the obviously religious studies, they were asked to go and find the tail of these horses first before they can enter the university. 
but obviously if they're lazy, they, they would go around it, try to find the tail of the horse, and sometimes they would end up jumping into the water in search of the tail. Well, there is obviously no tail of the horses, but it's quite an interesting story that they would like play a joke on all the new students coming here uh, to start their uh, studies first. So I found that quite fascinating. I thought I should share the story with you guys. I'm going to tell you a bit about this this building just in front of me, which is again right opposite the church. As you can see, this group apparently built uh, right in front of me. It is exactly the opposite of the cathedral, as we can show you. Uh, the story behind this is it, it is actually not a building. It looks like a building. It was a door, it has got windows, everything. But it's not a building. What happened was in the 17th century, the archbishop uh, would look through the window of the cathedral and saw these ugly buildings, poor people living in front of the cathedral, and he decided to build a wall which is only one meter deep, but to look like it's like a beautiful building, so he can have a nice view, but to block the view of the cathedral for all those people living in the houses. Uh, it's just the way of the world, I guess, which is still the same. As you can see, I'm standing here on the other side of the cathedral, actually the left wing of the cathedral, right in front of a beautiful door where you can see this three sculpture. One of them in the middle is St. James de Santiago and the other two disciples, which this is the whole story, started from. And this apparently door is called the door of forgiveness. According to the, the religion or Christianity, uh, they open these doors uh, on the day of the 25th of February when the whole story started about the Santiago. And anybody who goes through this door is or her all sins are forgiven. This now at the front is not the actual door. The actual door is actually in behind this this door. But uh, it's quite interesting to see. And Christianity is not the only religion believes in doors of forgiveness. There are other few religions that I know of also believes in having a doors of forgiveness. You can see behind me, this is one of the most beautiful and one of the biggest monasteries uh, built here. Uh, it has now converted into three different parts. Uh, the part on my right wing is converted into hostels uh, for pilgrimages. The middle part is still an educational institute where they are, they are teaching the future priests and archbishops, etc. And the wing on the left, which we can't really see from here, has turned into uh, exhibition uh, place as well. So this is quite an uh, exciting place to be. And one of the most beautiful architect uh, of the city. And it's right place, right on the way of the French way of Camino. So really nice, really exciting. Ciao.